ABC4 News, celebrating 75 years. Gobbler's Knob was busy today. Crowds gathering in the small Pennsylvania town for the 137th Groundhog Day celebration. For some Groundhog Day fans, this annual tradition means it's time to rewatch the Bill Murray and Andy McDowell classic. The only duo to rival Punxsutawney Phil in cementing Groundhog Day on the calendar. Here's ABC's Will Gans with more on the movie's milestone today. Every single day since 1993. Don't mess with me, pork chop. What day is this? It's February 2nd. Groundhog Day. The Once Bill Murray comedy classic celebrating 30 years. Excuse me, where's everybody going? To Gobbler's Knob. It's Groundhog Day. And while all that repeated attention didn't necessarily put Gobbler's Knob on the map, they've been celebrating Groundhog Day there since 1887, the movie did boost tourism. Gobbler's Knob going from 5,000 to 35,000 visitors each February 2nd. That number, according to Punxsutawney Phil's Inner Circle, which is a real thing made up of guys in top hats like Butch Philiber and Jeff Lundy, who told us about the lost language of groundhog ease. It's like an ear thing, nose. I mean, it's very complicated. All I need to know is shadow, no shadow. How long did it take you to learn groundhog ease? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm still learning. In the movie, Phil Connors never spoke groundhog ease, but Bill Murray did tell Dave Letterman about working with Chris Elliott. Was that fun? Yes, yeah. it was. I mean, let me say this. It's not fun to work with Chris Elliott. Really? It's, it's a challenge. Yeah. Hey, man. You touched me. Oh, thanks, Larry. Thank you. Most of the movie's filming was done in Woodstock, Illinois, which now hosts Groundhog Day celebrations of its own. But no matter where you celebrate, make sure you give Groundhog Day a 30th anniversary watch today. I'm happy now. Groundhog Day is considered by many to be one of the best comedies of all time, sitting at 94% on Rotten Tomatoes. Critics praising Bill Murray's ability to play the protagonist and the antagonist at the same time. And Bill said it's probably the best work he's ever done. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. Time now for Utah's most accurate forecast with Alana Brophy. Weather rates certified 11 years in a row. Okay, so clearly a fun tradition, a great movie, one of my faves. Yes. But there is a question. How accurate is Punxsutawney Phil? We want to know for that answer. Let's take it over to Chief Meteorologist Alana Brophy. What's the word, Alana? Don't mess with me, pork chop. <laughs> That's the word. Okay, this is where we start. I like Phil. I'm just going to start it out there, folks. I like Phil. Mm -hmm. But... We're waking someone up from underground. We're pulling up. Who's nice in the morning? I'm not. Emily, I bet you are. You're kind. Glenn, how are you in the morning? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, that's hesitating. That's, well, when's morning, I guess. Okay, right. Okay, exactly. Okay, if you're asking that If you got woken up, drug out of bed. Yeah. I and don't be a like pleasant that. Person. No. In Here we go. If I sleep well, <laughs> I'm good. Okay, but you're not the only one who thinks we should listen to our meteorologist, no. Alana. Nope, I'm not. Nope, that's right. PETA. PETA tweeted me today because I was like, I have an idea. You should watch ABC4 for your weather because Phil's not that accurate. Ladies and gentlemen, you see the tweet right there. He has no idea what's happening. Hey, listen, I don't when I'm woken up either. But look at the stats here. I've got to show you this. He's only right about roughly 40% of the time. 40% of the time. And he says, more winter. I don't want to complain. I'd love more winter because we need the moisture. In the last record-keeping years, 20 years, he didn't see a shadow. 106 he did, and 10 years, no record. That's only 40% of the time. Now, if you want an early spring, Noah is saying there's about a 50-50 chance. What am I saying? I'm saying you should listen to the meteorologist. I like Phil. He bit someone seven years ago, a little cranky. I, if I bit someone telling you the what, I don't know. Would you, would you cheer me on? I'm just saying stick with ABC4. We're on top of it, and we don't have to be woken up to do it. We're ready. We bushy eyes. Bushy tails, bright eyes, ready to go. This is what it looks like in Salt Lake County. I like the groundhog. Happy Groundhog Day. Just not my guy. I like accuracy. We've got haze and smog. You can't even see the valley. We are sitting with unhealthy air in Salt Lake County. And into tomorrow, it stays that way for the Wasatch Front. Look at Red and Logan, Cache Valley, really socked in. Cold air on the valley floor. Elevated particulate matter. Box Elder County is part of that. Eastern Utah also dealing with really cold temperatures. But on top of that, we're watching that pollution really stack up. Temperatures along the Wasatch Front are freezing in Salt Lake. And as we get through the next several hours, we get the 20s. The haze holds on. We're going to keep battling bad air, but clear 
skies until some clouds start to roll in. We get a weak disturbance for the end of the work week. It's not going to bring moisture, but it is going to bring increasing cloud cover for tonight as the ridge of high pressure will eventually shift to the east. Not happening right away, though. Okay, what a difference a year makes because we have these aerial photos. This is cool to see. This is snow cover over the Beehive State. Look at where we were last year. My goodness. It's great to have a wonderful year, and that picture is worth a thousand words. We need it. Okay, newest drought numbers are out. We've stayed status quo from where we were last week. We do have 19% of Utah in the red, the central portion of the state, portions of the West Desert. That's the extreme drought. That's a level four on a category of five for the drought monitor. Let's compare that to this time last year and look at the numbers. Okay, 19% in extreme drought, but in January of last year, 32%. February. I mean, 32%. This is a huge thing because it means that our active storm pattern is helping us out. We are battling the drought and we want to keep doing that. Water year, well above average for November, December, and January. Let's keep it going. A wet spring would help us and our river basins as well. Future cash shows that high pressure in control. Eventually, it's going to move to the east. It's going to break down. Here comes the cloud cover into tomorrow. Just a little bit of a disturbance comes through. Can't rule out the chance of moisture. Saturday's quiet. Here we are Sunday. Things start to change. Another storm rolls in. Rain turning to snow. Cold air fills in and we have snow potential as we roll into the beginning of next week. So that's when we get our next round of wet weather. Let's zoom in and you take a look. Find your city. We've got temperatures in the 30s. In northern Utah, central portion of the state dealing with some 40s, so the warming trend continues. The help of our southerly flow as we look at the next seven days in Washington County. We get to the 60s by the weekend. Slight chance on Monday, but that storm really targets northern and central Utah. And again, that's going to be rain switching over to snow. 30s to 40s, back to 30s. Hey, just don't at me, guys, about the groundhog. <laughs> I love, like, I just want to reiterate that I'm an animal lover. I love Punks County Field, but that was an accurate forecast. I don't mm. know about the shadow business. Groundhog Day is my favorite holiday. Oh, I don't get that either. Well, if you ever needed it's to know more about Glen Mills, why? Yeah. Well, you don't have to sit and worry about all the hustle and bustle of the busy holiday season. You just sit back, relax, and, and see wait. what the groundhog <laughs> tells you. It's amazing. He, did he get you his groundhog <laughs> gift, Dana? Phil Connors is uh, the only Phil I trust. <laughs> That's uh, Bill Murray's character. <laughs> uh, yeah.